Hey there, Internet Keith here, and welcome to the Cars and Keith YouTube channel. And in this video, we're going over the Active VE52 pressure washer. Now, if you haven't heard of this pressure washer before, I'm going to tell you it's the best value out there. A year ago when I did this video, I was one of the, the first to really put out a video about it. There are a few others. Obsessed Garage put one out just right around the same time. It's my best performing video so far. But I kind of want to go over it again because this is changed right they've made some updates they realized that there were some issues more or less for the u.s market because us americans here we are just a little bit different it still has four and a half star reviews but like i said there's a lot of us in the united states who like to do things a little bit above and beyond what's expected uh, and that caused some issues for them but you know what instead of just saying hey do it the, uh, the way out of the box you're not supposed to mod anything. They went ahead and made some changes to improve that because they understood the market. Most of those manufacturers out there, they say the 3,000 PSI and two and a half gallons per minute, but it's only $129.99 on Amazon. Well, they are lying to you. You know, the reviews on YouTube are a really good tool for you to not have to waste your money on a crappy pressure washer. So here it is all together. Now, in my previous video, I showed the unboxing, how to put it all together. I'll leave a link to that if you want to go to that. The stock gun feels really good in the hand. It's well balanced, comes with the M22 fitting on this end as well, so you can hook up things. Your soap dispenser right here, it connects to your wand. So that way you're not having to connect it all the way on the end and you have a little more balance right there. This will actually hook up to an MJJC right out of the box as well, which is great. I'll show you that later. Here's your wand extension. Like I said, it's the M22 fitting, goes right on. You have quarter inch quick disconnect at the end for your tips. Your tips are all 3.7 orifice tips. You have a 40 degree, you have your orange, which is a 15 degree, you have your red, which is zero degree. This is a braided, high quality hose. It is only 20 feet, which is the downfall of this hose. If it's 25, you wouldn't need to upgrade. You have your M22 fittings, they are 15 millimeters, and out of the unit is 15 millimeters, but they understood the American market and they included a 15 millimeter to 14 millimeter uh, adapter right here. This allows you to, you could use it here to add another hose that you may already have uh, as an extension, or you can use it on the unit and that way you can change to your upgraded hose. But if you're staying with what's in the box, this adapter is just a nice thing to have. Here's nice, like I said, from the side, your electrical cord wraps around this right here and then you can put the main part of your GFCI right in there. You have your tip storage right there. Soap dispenser storage, nice, not really tight, but it is not gonna fall off. The ends right here, they actually clip on the inside. They're not meant to wrap the hose around. You clap them on the inside. That allows you to set the hose nice and neat in there. Then right here in these little concaves right here is actually a part where you can snap the end of the hose in there like that. Now that I've explained all that, you're gonna be like, well, Keith, didn't yours break? Well, it did, but I keep track of how much usage that I have. The other one, I measured the hours. I was about 107, 108 hours of usage. 100 hours is about what you expect out of a residential pressure washer. Most people will never even get to that because they don't use it once a month. There will be links below for this from Amazon, but also I have an Obsessed Garage link below. It doesn't cost you guys any extra. I do get a little bit out of it, but it does, like I said, it helps the channel. So let's get right into the washing. Well, the first thing you want to do once you get the hose hooked up uh, and the gun hooked up, you want to make sure that when you have the water on that you purge all of the air out of the system. That way you'll improve the longevity of the device. Um, the, that initial amount is to get any uh, contaminants or um, even sediment from your water, metal materials out and not clogged up in your nozzle here. All right, time for the soap dispenser. I have put a 10 to 1 dilution ratio of g Technic W4 citrus foam in here. That's actually really good for an out-of-the-box soap dispenser. Like I said, it's not a foam cannon. It dispenses soap. A little bit of foam. Coverage is great. Dwell time is great. Actually, it's just pretty effective. I'm not a huge fan of the fact that you can't turn the fan. I don't like the fan being this way. I'd rather have it vertical. Now you see how cumbersome that is to constantly have to change that and change this. Now this hose is very good for what it is. It has a lot of strength. Uh, it lays well. The problem is since you have a fixed point on the gun, there is no swiveling. 
so no matter what movement you do with this gun, it is going to adversely affect how the hose lays, spins. It's not going to kink. This hose doesn't kink and it's not going to like spin up in the air and stuff. It's going to lay. So you're constantly having to unwind and rewind the hose. So I'll show you a few ways that you can upgrade this unit. When we test this out, we're going to be using the quick disconnect with the adapter I'm fixing to show you here. But I can also show you that just like that stock unit, this has an M22 fitting at the end. That way you can hook these two together this way. But personally, I would never suggest to do it this way, having to turn this constantly. So here's the adapter I'm talking about. It has an M22 14 millimeter connection here, which works on this gun. It's only 15 millimeter at the unit and at the hose. It is not at the end of the gun. Uh, it goes to a quarter inch MPT thread. Then it goes into a quarter inch quick disconnect right here that has a female MPT. So these two will screw in together. Boy, that didn't sound right. <laughs> and then you have your quick disconnect. So just like the end of your wand or that foam cannon, you would hook this to the end. But once you use this, you'll never use that wand extension again unless you need a wand extension uh, for cleaning sides of the house, uh, reaching things, that kind of stuff. This is mainly car washing type stuff. This is the MJJC Pro version 2 foam cannon. Uh, it does the thickest foam of anything out there. The only thing you'll see different between this and the actual model is I modified this dial from a different foam cannon. Works the same way, it just fits my hand a little bit better. But you have a quarter inch quick disconnect, goes right in, the tips as well, and you can see you're already, you have so much a shorter amount. Now, this is so long that this does leverage you a good bit, but it is way better than having another two foot out on this long wand. You do this a few times and you'll be hooked on foaming. You don't have to be this thick, you can turn this little dial right here and get a little bit less. Something that runs a little more, or you can turn the dial down even more and get something even closer to what the other one was doing. It gives you the option to do any way you want. Putting the tip that comes with the device, as you see, much shorter gun, more control for you, leverage it closer to your arm so it's not, you know, pulling you all over the place. You're not gonna need two hands with this one. Those of you who don't want to go crazy on the upgrades, this is the best option possible. I'll have links below uh, to these two pieces that you could put together to create this adapter. Now when you clean it around your house, this is when you're going to get wet. Uh, shooting something higher, so those of you who are watching RVs uh, with this water is going to come back and it's going to shoot in the air it's going to land on you. Now I do have a short gun but I can reach so I'm good. That is definitely much cleaner. I do think with the wand you would definitely get a little bit closer. There we go. Pretty good results, huh? Didn't take any time at all. I just went one, sometimes a back and forth pass, depending on how far your spray is away from the surface. You can see I have my hose running straight to my spigot. This is my new wall mount setup. So I have a spigot on the inside of the garage here. Uh, we have that DVD 52 here. We have the stock hose hooked up to the unit and to the gun. We won't have to test the red or the orange because they are the same size orifice. Now some of the other brands, Ryobi and them, they have like a different size for each color level. So you get different PSI amounts, but these will have the same PSI, the same GPM. One minute on the clock, let's go. That was a dead consistent 1000 PSI. Maybe a little more than what I was experiencing when I did the old one in the upper garage about a year ago. I'm saying 1.85, 1.9 gallons per minute at that 1000 PSI. Like I said, amazing numbers. This is a great unit. You saw how we can clean the car with it, how we can foam it, uh, how we can clean the brick wall outside and get some of that stuff off. 
So now on to the next segment, which is those of us who know about the V52, may have had problems with it, or on the fence about buying it, or want to know what is in the newest model that's out there right now, the newest version. Now this section of the video, I go over what is really going on with the Active V52. If you haven't been watching Active, I'll fill you in. Uh, I will tell you the issues, and I'm actually gonna show snippets from their YouTube video. I got permission from them to show this to where they'll see James, the CEO of Active, you'll see his responses. They actually did videos where they did the returns process. They had pallets of these. They were taking them off, putting them on their machine that measures all this kind of stuff. And they were actually seeing some of the issues that people were having. Now I know a lot of you had units that you sent back and the next one was perfect. Or I've heard of people going through three or four units. At the top of your unit here, there's a sticker, right? And there's a big number on there that says like BE52 and a bunch of numbers. Reach out to their customer service, give them that number, ask them, hey, does mine have all of these updates. So this is my second one. Like I said earlier, the first one, it blew up at a, like 107 hours. You hear that sound where it's just constantly running. Uh, that is the majority of all the issues that people have complained about with these car detailers, you guys. I know a lot of you were the ones that were a victim to the warranty coverage where you let them know that you use this in a detailing van, uh, detailing business. This is not a commercial product. A lot of them returned, they did take care of it, but um, it's not designed for that. But the 2.0 is definitely designed more for that. Uh, still not a commercial unit. I've heard, and they've, they've gave little rumors that they are working on like a fully capable commercial unit. Okay, so the first issue is this on off switch right here. So one of the features on the original V52 was a switch that turned the unit on or off, and it had an LED light incorporated into the switch. An LED switch by definition is more complicated than a basic switch, so we decided to switch that out. Even then though, we had another issue where the alignment of the switch, or of the improved switch that we used, wasn't quite perfect all the time, and you got instances where customers were turning on the switch and it wasn't properly activating. So that required us to retool not only the position of the switch, but how it was housed within the body. Now the second issue that's come up is oil leaking out of uh, the pump. I've never had that issue. I haven't had an issue with this one or the previous one. Obviously this one's supposed to have to fix. One of the challenges we had early on was customers complaining about oil leaks coming from the pump. Now typically that's caused by remaining shards of the aluminum kind of um, machining process that haven't been properly cleaned out of the pump before the pump is assembled. And these shards can kind of cause um, ruptures in the seals and whatnot, causing the oil to leak. That process has improved over time, but we still have gone back to the factory and asked them to improve both the cleaning process, so making sure that there were no shards remaining in the pump before it went into assembly, and also just the entire machining, um, I guess you could say precision, so that we could minimize the amount of shards to begin with. So issue three and four, there's cracked pumps issues and cycle surging issues. And I'm gonna let James explain now with a newer one and an older one to show you the difference in how the auto start stop and how the system deals with pressure. Yeah. There you go. You're lucky. So we've taken another unit from our returns auditing process. This one happens to be uh, one from our Canadian customer uh, under the Simonized brand. When Ming pulled the trigger to stop the trigger, we're up at 2,935 internal peak pressure. The old design, you could say, the auto cutoff valve was sticking and therefore was not um, you know, cutting off the, the, the unit. Or when used sometimes with the 50 foot hose, there wasn't suffi sufficient pressure building up Therefore, the unit would surge and keep cycling because the auto cutoff valve wasn't working in the way that it was working. So the objective, of course, is we want to make sure the pressure within the pump stays at a reasonable level. In this case, it's under 2,000 PSI. The peak pressure is at 1,996, so 1,996, which is below kind of our 2,000 PSI. Uh, objective and what that really does is it limits the amount of pressure that uh, the pump will kind of run up to when you do have a more consistent auto cutoff valve you're gonna have 
uh, a more durable machine. You're going to have less cycling when you're using uh, the unit with no uh, crack on the pump. Hose. Pardon me? No oh, crack. No cracking on the pump because the pump is never getting up to those high pressures. So it's going to help the quality of the machine. I want to thank Active for allowing me to use their clips. I know some of them may have been long, but these explanations are important for those of you who are on the fence about buying one or had an issue and that you know they want to know why. In the description below, I will have links to the videos that I used. Um, but it's a wealth of information. They are very transparent. Please go ahead and subscribe to their YouTube channel. Follow them on Instagram. All right, now to the numbers. I hope I didn't bore you. I hope you're still tuned in. All right, guys and gals in the detailing world, this is the wall mount setup. If you haven't already seen the video, I'll link it. It'll be at the end of the thing. This is the first time this has ever actually been used on film uh, completely. We have the water is on here. We haven't turned off the deionization. We're just going to run straight up through. Water is on. Water is off to this unit. Here we go. Undo our lock. Our reel. We'll just grab out a couple feet. Lock it back. I mean, it's like 85 bucks or something like that for this. This is awesome. Okay, first up. Now, I'm not going to do any close-ups on the pressure gauge. You're just going to have to trust me. You guys know that I, I'm not going to lie about this crap. I got my amp gauge here, which will be on the 20 amp circuit that's on the wall. But this 20 amp circuit, the yellow wire is, is right there, right behind here. But I think maybe this might actually run better on that 20 amp. Probably. Now, actually, I don't know on a 3.7. I think... Uh, the stock we run it may run actually more PSI because I was running a one inch out of this spigot right here. And that's why Obsessed Garage and them use those huge one inch Prevost connections and that kind of stuff. But I can't afford that. This is budget stuff right here. 3.0 nozzle. Here we go. So about 1200 PSI, 14.7 amps. 3.5 1050 13.4 amps 3.7 975 12.85 amps 4.0 Like 930 PSI, it's about 12.6 amps. Just for the heck of it, we're gonna run an MJJC on auto mix. Wow, it's a 1200 PSI, 14.6 amps with the 1.25 orifice. Okay, we're running the Kimball Guys bottle and cap now. Regular dilution and no auto mix tip. mess. Uh, 1200 PSI again, but 14.4 amps. If you can tell, I've got some wet spots. I've tried to dry off. I had a few uh, mishaps with sprayage. You'll see it in the bloopers. But uh, 3.5. 5. I would say we're slightly less than halfway between 1.75 and 2. 1. 1.85 something like that uh, to be expected and we already know with the stock that a 3.7 did slightly more than this closer to 1.9 or so so we're just going to skip to 3.7 with this setup and go straight to the 4.0 and try to get that 2.0 gallons per minute and here we go. maybe you can see it from here it's shaking around right now so I remember last time, I don't think I ever got truly 2.0. I think I got like 1.95. Oh, come on. You know what? We're rounding up. I call it 2.0. It's more like 1.97, 1. I mean, it's 2.0 gallons per minute. Better numbers than I got on the first edition of this uh, over a year ago. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're a detailer, I hope it gave you some great information to give you a little more confidence in purchasing one of these. If you're new to the pressure washer and you're just looking for a review, I hope it helped you out as well. Like I said, this is the best value out there. There's nothing that matches this value-wise. Like I said before, there are links below for Amazon and I have my affiliate link for Obsessed Garage below if you wanna go through that to look at their site, pick up either the V56, V52, or the 2.0 uh, if this video is already out. I would definitely be having a video on the 2.0. I am on the pre-order list to get one. 
So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Moving closer, show you everything that you get with. All right, detailing bros. Some of you who may have gotten active BD52. God, why are they running across the floor upstairs? What the heck? And it's summertime, they're out of school. There is no hour of the day that I have currently that something is quiet. Like they are like way off on their sleep schedules. So you see, I am unprepared for this video. I'm here searching their video to figure out what's going on. The same issue costs two different types of symptoms. <laughs> Subscribe. Uh oh man, I need to move for a minute. Uh, we'll use the jumper cable. Well, I mean, jeez. I stick the white tip through. Stop. You stupid. Stop. OCD's kicking in. We're seeing it live. All right. Screw it, we're right there now. We have it right here. Idiots. What the fuck was that? What the hell? I'm surprised. I don't know if it's the fact. Well, I'm kind of. Well, I mean, I was already. Sh I was. Well, I was already kind of. I was already kind of happy earlier because the stock gun did. I'm kind of happy.